it's a wet and windy day here in Devon. It's December, so that's to be expected. Anyway, uh, you find me underneath a 15 metre houseboat, built of steel, all welded, 10 6 4 configuration, so that means 10 millimetres for the bottom plate, 6 for the sides, 4 for the tops. So I'm just underneath taking some fitness readings, and I found, uh, well, for me, it's one of my favourite types of corrosion. Not so popular with owners, apparently. Um, rust tubercles. These are really quite strange things. Um, sort of like a, a self-enclosed or gallic colony of rust that kind of feeds on steel. Um, they're quite easy to spot. They just show up as like big lumpy crusty things. It's a bit like finding small oysters along the bottom of your boat. Alas, though, no pearls. What you get inside as a prize is usually a pit, sometimes quite deep. Now these things can grow quite quickly and the pits they can make can very quickly render steel plate thin enough to be uninsurable. Not that bad here today, but I thought I'd show you what I found so you can get a feel for what these things look like and the damage they do. So here you can see two I've already exposed here and here. Scrape them off, scrape around the outside. And I've taken a pit depth measurement in there of 2.6 millimetres, 2.2 in this one. The plate nearby is at 9.9, .9, so very little thickness loss elsewhere, but 9.9, .9, take away 2.6, is 7.3. So there's still 7 millimetres or more of steel left in the pit. But that's a 24% thickness loss in uh, not very long. And that's the damage that these rust tube bubbles can do. You see there's some ones here, small, medium. This one is quite large. So you can get a feel for what they look like. Very obvious to spot. And the really key thing is they come off very easily. Scrape off. Typically brown on the inside, white on the outside, quite crumbly. You can break them apart very easily. Let's see what they're like inside. But once you've taken it off, just getting the corner of my scraper in there, you can see how soft the steel has become. Underneath those bits. So let's get a just get a quick reading close by. See if we can get one of those. See what we're talking about. So right next to the pit, there we go. Solid reading of ten. That's really good. So that's that's zero thickness loss alongside the pit. And if I actually get inside the pit, typical pit. What am I looking at here? One point eight millimeters. So, you know, you can see very quickly the steel thickness is going quite fast. Jerry, this one, 3.5, 3.6, I can't quite see that. You can see it better than I can. So that is 2.5 millimetres of uh, thickness loss. That's 25% for a 10 mil plate. Rusty burkles can grow quite quickly, so when you start finding them on your boat, as a bare minimum, just scrape them all off, get some paint underneath as an emergency measure. Better still, um, shop blast the base plate back to SA 2.5 and then repaint with uh, two pack epoxy paint, something decent. Um, paint only lasts for about five to ten years, even the good stuff. So, you know, this is a job that needs doing on a regular basis on all steel hull boats. Thickness loss is, uh, is you know, bad news for your boat, and once you get below, yeah. 4 mil, 3.5, you'll find that um, many insurance companies will start to get twitchy and the vessel reaches its minimum insurable thickness. Um, that's quite a detailed subject and I explore that in a bit more detail in this video here. So go and take a look at that where I looked at the minimum insurable thickness for narrowboats based on a paper done by uh, two very good inner waterways, um, marine surveyors, uh, Peter Brooks and um, uh, Simon Keeling. Here I am, towards the back of the boat, starboard side. You can see here there's a really fine collection of quite sizeable tubercles that are all kind of coming together. And again, usual routine. They can come away in quite big pieces. All looking exactly as I'd expect them to look. And again, it's about finding those pits beneath. A little scrape and see how soft the steel is in many places. Uh, coming off for two millimeters there. Yeah, fine. Rusty book is on your friend. Relatively quickly and eat into the steel, and they can very quickly produce pits that become meaningful and demand 
much. It's here on the side. This one's a sinister one, it's a plate reading of 9.9 .9 with a 1.5 millimeter depth pit. It's a pit depth thickness of 8.4 meters. That's still plenty of steel to, to be sure of, but certainly if you do nothing about it, the inevitable is going to happen someday soon. I've said it before, I'll say it again. There are three things you can do to keep your boat insurable and seaworthy. Number one, build it from the thickest steel the design would allow for. Number two, prepare and paint the steel, look after it well, and most importantly of all, keep it painted and fit anodes at the right scaling and composition. Interestingly, this boat has got no anodes fitted. Um, not uncommon, but um, I've always been a fan of anodes, but it's about getting the scaling and the composition right to make sure they actually add value to the boat. Hope you found it useful. If you did, check out this video here where I will delve in deeper into what the minimum insurable thickness means for a steel hull boat. Thanks for watching. See you next time.